For a while now, probably my biggest request for tutorials have been for Wax 2.0 tutorials, which is a free video editing software for Windows. So as a response to those requests, I've decided to create a forum specifically for Wax 2.0, the tutorials I've created, some of the tips you guys can offer. And in this video, I'm going to go over some other special effects you can do with Wax 2.0 specifically particle effects such as uh, snow or things that you can use for titles and warping effects, warping and morphing to morph from one picture to another and to warp specific pictures or videos. First thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to create particles within wax and uh, you can use particles for snow or stars, fire, different things like that. First thing you want to do is convert all of your video files to AVI and all your audio files to WAV and you can do this using Format Factory. Uh, it converts to almost anything and uh, once you got everything converted to the right format then just drag them all to the same folder and kind of start a project folder. I've uploaded this project folder to the Tinkernut.com forum link that I showed you earlier if you want to follow along. So I just opened up Wax and I right clicked under media bins to add media files and I'm just going to start adding the different media files for this project. And another thing you want to do is right click on one of your video files and go to properties and then click on the summary tab and get the height and width of that video file. So now go to project and settings and adjust the project settings to fit that. So mine's 1280 by 720 and I'm going to change the frame rate to 30. That's the uh, general frame rate for most video cameras. So now I'm just going to drag a clip to the timeline and this is what the clip looks like. It's just uh, zooming in on the snowman, nothing too fancy. And it's a little bit long so I'm going to crop it down by dragging the, uh, the end, the tail end of the video clip inwards. And uh, now I'm going to click on the Video Plugins tab and drag this little slider bar all the way back to the beginning of the video clip. And I'm going to drag the video clip down one uh, to slot number two. And I'm going to drag a Particles plugin to slot number one. And uh, this is what the Particles effect looks like. It's kind of fire. If you toggle down the Particle effect, you can adjust the blend and the colors um, I just uncheck blend and check colors and I toggle down the creation. This allows you to uh, adjust how many particles you want created. Um, I adjusted the maximum amount to a thousand and how many particles to create a second, I'm adjusting that to a thousand as well. And that kind of lessens the amount of particles that are there. And now I'm going to change the color to white because I'm going to be creating snow and white is the color of snow. And uh, you can also adjust the size of the particles. These are a little bit too large as they are, so I'm adjusting the minimum size to one and the maximum size to five. And this kind of uh, lets them vary. Now I'm going to toggle down the destroy option and all I'm going to do under this is just change the color to white. And uh, this will make all the particles white. Now I'm going to toggle down the emitter options and this allows you to adjust where the particles come from and you can adjust the X and Y positions. I'm not going to mess with those though. I'm just showing you what they do. But what you want to mess with is the radius options. The radius X will let it spread out from left to right across the video clip. The radius Y does up and down and this lets it cover the entire video clip. If you do radius Z, this gives it depth. It goes forward to back. And then you also want to adjust the direction of where the snow is coming from. Right now it's set to go upwards. We want it to go down, so I'm going to adjust the direction Y to a negative amount. If you want it to look like it's being whisked by the wind, you can also adjust the X direction as well. And then you can just mess around with that, change the velocity, uh, different things like that if you want. Um, but those are just the basics. You can fit it to, uh, to suit your needs. And now I'm just going to drag the slider bar um, around. You'll notice that at the beginning of the video clip, there aren't any particles. So what I did is I just uh, adjusted the work zone of the video clip to where the particles start forming. And now, uh, last but not least, I'm just going to drag a wind sound effect to the timeline and adjust it to uh, fit the video clip. And 
uh, just the beginning here to fit the work area. And that's pretty much it. I'm gonna click Project Settings again, change the file name to Snowfall, and save it in the Video Clips folder. And then I'm gonna click Options, and uh, I'm gonna use, most people use DivX, I'm gonna choose XVID, uh, the XVID option for the encoding option. So I'm just gonna click OK for both of those, and then click the green render button, and it's gonna start making the video. All right, so now the next thing that I'm gonna show you how to do is how to warp video. You can use this for ripples or morphing from one uh, clip to another clip. So I just created a new project and I'm adjusting the project size to fit the video size, which for me is 1280 by 720 with a frame rate of 30. And uh, I'm gonna change the file name to warp.avi and save it to my video clips folder and I'm gonna adjust the encoding options to XVID and then just click OK to uh, get out of both of those. Now just click on the Media Pool tab and start adding media files. I'm gonna add a Beam video file and a Clip O2 video file and a laser sound effect. So this is the Clip O2 video file. It's just me getting close to the snowman and then backing away real quick. And it's a little bit long as well so I'm gonna crop it down a little bit drag it to the number two slot and I'm going to drag beam the beam video file to the number one slot and this is what that looks like and you notice that it has a black background so to get rid of that just click on the video plugins and drag a chroma key plugin on top of the beam video file and choose the color option uh, eyedropper to select the black background and then just drag the tolerance up until the background starts disappearing and all you're left with is the uh, beam. And now I'm just gonna, going to crop it a little bit um, to make it a little bit more precise and I'm going to drag it to the end of the video clip. And the effect that we're going for is that this is kind of a force field between me and the snowman. And Right now it's on top of the snowman but to change where it's located you can drag a quick 3D plugin on top of the Beam video file. And this will let you adjust the location of it as well as the position and scale and rotation. So now we're gonna start warping. To do this, drag a warp option um, on top of the video clip. And uh, if you don't have Win Morph, you can download it for free from the link below. And um, this is the Win Morph application. You can see that it automatically imports the video clip. And what you want to do first is click on the rectangle uh, shape option and drag it around the video clip to kind of create a safe zone. And what I'm going to do now is uh, check the oval option and drag an oval around the video clip. This is where the warp is going to stop. And I don't want it to stop inside the video clip, so I'm dragging it around outside. And now I'm going to drag another oval for where I want the warp to start and then just click the associate shape button, select where you want the warp to start, which is this oval, and then drag, drag a line to where you want it to stop, which is the, this outside oval. Now if I click the preview button at the top, um, I can drag the slider bar and it's gonna show me what the warp looks like. Now I'm gonna adjust where it starts and stops. So I just double clicked on the, the shape set in the upper right and uh, creates a timeline in the lower right and if I drag the video clip to where I want it to start I can adjust the uh, the warp in the timeline with this little slider bar so I just drag the first dot to where I wanted it to start and uh, now I'm gonna drag the end dot to where I want it to end and then you can just kind of adjust it in the upper left is the slider bar that I'm using to scrub through the video footage and I'm just uh, adjusting it a little bit more to where I want it to start and stop. And you can also preview what it looks like as long as the preview box is checked at the top. And then when you're through, just close out of it and it automatically uh, imports the, the warp into your video footage and this is what it looks like. 
And then I also went ahead and added a warp to the beam as well to kind of give it a spherical look. And now I'm just going to make the beam fade in and out. I've selected the beginning of the beam video footage and I toggled down the chroma key and I changed the stopwatch. I clicked on the stopwatch and changed it to linear and I moved the tolerance all the way up so that the beam disappeared. Now I'm just moving forward a few frames and I'm dragging the tolerance back down so that it appears and I'm going forward a few more frames and I'm adjusting the tolerance just a little bit and you can see that every time I adjust the tolerance it puts a little dot on the timeline. So now I'm going to move all the way to the end of the clip and move the tolerance all the way back up so that it completely disappears and that's what it looks like. Alright now all you had to do is click render and that's it. Alright that's it for this tutorial from morgotatinkernut.com.